Well, hello and welcome to this week's edition of What's Up Danville. I'm your host, Mark Aaron, Multimedia Design Manager for the City of Danville. Joining me this week is the Deputy City Manager for the City of Danville, Ken Larking. We're down at the Crossing at the Dan Complex, Community Market right here behind us, to talk about a very special event, community-wide event we're going to be having here on Friday night, May 1st as we launch the rebranding of the River District. We've got a celebration that's going to start uh, about 6.30 that evening and go until fireworks later that night. And Ken's going to talk a little bit more about this special event. I know, uh, Ken, a lot of uh, people have come together in the community to make this happen. We've got a lot of partners. I know the regional foundation is teaming up with the city to make this happen. But uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the rebranding of the River District and really how this all started, I would say, what, about a year, year and a half ago? Yeah, it's been about two years, okay. and it's been a, a very long process, a very detailed process, but we took uh, uh, some members of the community together, and uh, we had some uh, uh, folks uh, come in and help us research the River District, what the River District means to Danville, what it is right now, what it's been, and after uh, focus groups and surveys and other research uh, methods, they came together and uh, come and developed a brand for the River District that really means something to Danville. That's great and we're actually gonna unveil that brand um, on Friday night May the 1st. We'll have a big screen TV out front here uh, for all the viewers and the citizens that come out uh, to see uh, that night but uh, tell me not only will we uh, be rebranding the district but we're gonna have new gateway signs. There's a lot more that's going into this as well right? Yes, the second part of the effort of the rebrand is to help people get in and around the River District. So we've added uh, wayfinding as well, uh, which is basically signage throughout the district. So yeah. when you uh, drive into the River District, you want to know where something is, like the community market or the science center. There'll be signage that will tell you exactly how to get there. And then there'll also be signage for parking as well. Okay. So we'll get you to a parking space, you'll park, and then we'll help you from there to, um, as a pedestrian to walk to whatever uh, amenity you want to see. Right. Well, it's great. It seems just like the next step in the process because the River District has just really taken off over the last uh, three years. The, the, the private uh, investment in the district has just been unbelievable. I know um, city council, city staff has really stepped up and, and put the public funds into it, but it seems like people from all over the country are really uh, getting a better understanding of what we're doing here in the district, and now we're really going to have a brand to drive that message home. Exactly. Uh, there has been a lot of investment in the River District. We've, uh, I think at the last calculation, about $90 million of private investment in the River District, and um, that's uh, after about 20 to $30 million of public investment in a wide variety of areas and, and we think it's been a lot of uh, a, you know good bang for our buck yeah. and it's been a great asset to Danville as a whole um, we got uh, some residents here about the lofts are about 95 percent occupied uh, we got a lot of businesses opening up a lot more activity and you can even see this today there's a lot out there right now yeah, yeah we've got the parking lot full we've got a, a community-wide health fair going on here behind us today but uh, let's talk about this celebration that's going to be held Friday night May the 1st right here at the community market uh, things are going to get started at 6 30 and I, th I think we've got some pretty unique entertainment for that evening can you tell us about that well, this is something I haven't seen before, so I'm looking forward to it. It's a Dueling Pianos group. Uh, I believe it's called Dueling Pianos International, and what they do is uh, they actually take requests. They'll um, they'll they'll sing along. They'll they'll uh, play the pianos. You can there's a comedy routine that goes along with it. Right. I'll be honest, I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's really exciting, and I'm looking forward to it. That's going to be unique. I, like I said, I've never experienced that as well, so that'll be fun to see that night. And then also, we're going to have uh, food trucks, beverages. We're going to have bounce houses for the kids. It'll be something going on all up, culminating, I guess, with fireworks at the end of the night. Right? Exactly. It starts at 6.30. There'll be something for people to do of all ages throughout the evening. And at about 9.30 or whenever it's dark, we're going to shoot off some fireworks, and it's going to be great. That's right. And then also that evening, uh, we talked about the signage. Uh, we're actually going to be uh, showing on the screen here um, at the community market uh, some of the signage that will be lit up for the first time, right? That's right. Uh, we've uh, got one gateway sign that we're working on right now. We're hoping we'll be finished in time. We mm -hmm. think it will be. So we're going to unveil that gateway sign, and that'll uh, give everybody an idea of what the other gateway signs are going to look like. Um, yeah. 
we also have some other surprises in store um, that uh, will be pretty exciting, I think. Yeah, well, free admission that night. So you want to come on out, enjoy the, uh, the atmosphere. We're really excited about the rebranding of the River District, and we're going we're gonna to cap it off with a wonderful celebration here at the Community Market. Things will get started at 630, and we'll have something exciting for you all night long, and then you can't beat fireworks. As soon as uh, it's around 9, 930, I know uh, the fireworks will get started, and uh, you can't beat that to, to culminate the night. And uh, Ken, I appreciate uh, you taking the time to join us today to tell us a little about this event. But I know we've got partners that have made this happen, and I know we want to thank the Regional Foundation definitely for stepping up to make this happen, right? Absolutely. The Danville Regional Foundation has been a huge partner in the River District since the beginning, really. Right. They're, they're almost the leaders of what's going on downtown, and um, we appreciate their help. And they've been really great to help us out with this event and, and also with the branding effort. Right. Well, Ken, uh, thank you for joining us today. We're going to take a quick break, though. When we come back from break, uh, May 1st is just really the kickoff to a big event uh, here in the city of Danville throughout the weekend. We've got the opening of the uh, Farmer's Market on that Saturday. We've got a concert Saturday night. When we come back from break, we're going to talk to uh, uh, Mr. Poizia, who is a program director here with Parks and Recreation at the Community Market, and he's going to tell us about some great events that are taking place um, on Saturday here in the city of Danville. So again, Ken, thanks for joining us today, and uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Well, welcome back to this week's edition of What's Up Danville. I'm your host, Mark Aaron, Multimedia Design Manager for the City of Danville. In the first half of the show, we talked with Deputy City Manager Ken Larkin all about the River District rebranding celebration to be held on uh, May the 1st. That's uh, Friday, May 1st. Now we've got Kenny Poizia, who is the mark, uh, Community Market Director here, Program Director with Parks and Recreation, and he's got a lot going on this weekend. The opening of the market on May the 2nd, and uh, I know we've got a concert that night. So, Kenny, I know... Uh, Everybody's always looking forward to that first day of the market. You always get a, a great crowd out. Tell our viewers at home what they can expect on the first day of the market this year. Well, the first day of the market this year, we're of course going to do the tomato plants, which is kind of an annual tradition now. They're going to be given out by the uh, Danville Girl Scouts, which is also kind of a tradition. Yeah. That's going to be while supplies last. We're actually getting them this year for one of our own vendors, so we're able to keep that in-house. should be high quality. Um, vendor wise, most of our vendors came back from last year. Great. Pretty much without one or two, uh, all of them came back with a That's few new people. Wonderful. So we're going to have coffee, um, crafts, of course, produce. Uh, when the market first opens, it's going to be mainly greens. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we're going to have people in there with meats. Uh, we have uh, ham, uh, pork, right. chicken. Uh, we have a beef vendor. So you can come out and get. Local produce, meats, crafts, gifts, coffee, Great. honey. It's anything you, know. you need locally grown to be right here at the market. Absolutely. Now tell me, I know uh, you talked about vendors coming back. Uh, about how many vendors do you have on a weekly mm -hmm. basis here at the market? Well, in the peak season, um, we're one of the biggest in the state, actually. We would have around Great. 50 to 60 vendors. That's wonderful. Now, we talk about peak season. I know greens and everything will be in now. Mm -hmm. be a little too early for most of your vegetables. But uh, tell me a little bit about what we, you can expect uh, for the uh, growers to have um, on the first, or on the second, excuse me. That's mainly what it's going to be uh, okay. this time of year. There are going to be uh, several vendors that are going to have plants um, that you can put in. I know one of them is planning on bringing tomato plants okay, and great. greens uh, this early in the season. There's not a lot of other stuff available. You're going to have cut herbs, probably yeah. some people are bringing down. And then we have several vendors now that uh, do things like homemade soaps and body care products. They'll have okay. those all year round. Okay, great. So now tell me, hours of operation for the market, obviously first day is May the 2nd, but uh, how long does uh, the market stay open and what are your hours of operation? We are 7.30 to noon every Saturday, May to October. All right, and then I know in the summer months, you also have a Wednesday market as well, which has gone over real well the last couple of years, right? That's right. We have it on Wednesday afternoons in just July and August, which the idea behind that is that's peak season. There's the most produce out there, and that's from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So you have that gap in the afternoon uh, where people can get off work and come down here and shop. 
Well, we'd love to see you out on May the 2nd, the opening of the market. Again, you want to get here early. I know uh, when it gets into peak season, all the great produce that's available here, it's gone quick. So if you're if you're down here by 9 o'clock, you're, you're, you're too late, right, Kenny? <laughs> well, depending on how much they have, yeah. yeah. Some I mean, of them, um, we have a couple vendors that uh, have steady customers, and they come in and they buy all morning. Uh, we have some baked goods people like that, too. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're just selling it out till they're gone and you know nine ten o'clock they're out of here that's great well it's great to hear that we got all most of our vendors coming back some new ones coming in and one of the biggest in the state as kenny said so we want to see you down here at the community market on may the second for the opening um, of the market and again all year long on saturday mornings and then the summer month months as you said july and august mm -hmm. uh we'll have the wednesdays at the market as well so uh kenny i know uh we got the opening of the market in the morning but we got stuff going on all that day, right? That's right. At the same time as the market is open in, in the front half here, in the back half, the community room, you're going to have Make Dan Will Shine. I believe they're using it to Make Dan Will Shine Home Expo. Mm -hmm. They're going to be giving away free tool kits. Uh, for the farmer's market side, they're also going to be doing free tote bags. Great. in addition to the free plants so it's a lot of things for people to come out and enjoy yeah. and that's going to be just a beautification of Danville spring cleaning um, home improvement uh, city services they're going to have the um, police department uh, prescription uh, drug take back right. and uh, document shredder down here as well yeah. uh, I think they're going to put some uh, lawn equipment and stuff out front right here for people to check out Great, so yeah. that also should be a very good event yeah. And it's, it's going to run parallel at the same time as the farmer's market. Well, that'll be great. We'll get some foot traffic to the expo and some people that may have never been to the market that are coming to the expo will be able to experience that mm -hmm. as well. And Make Danville Shine has really been a great event. Uh, last year, we got a lot of the community involved in, in kind of the cleanup, fix-up aspect of, of your home. Uh, our Public Works Department is offering rebates on and uh, set-outs and things like that on, on things you can uh, rent during the month of May. And uh, some of the set-out requirements are being waived that month. If you'd like more information, uh, you can contact Public Works 799-5245. I know uh, I was talking to Richter Zinovich and some of the uh, container rentals are already getting booked up. So if you want to get out and, and fix up your property during the month of May, that's the time to do it. But you can get things kick-started on Saturday the 2nd at the Make Danville Shine Home Exo right here in conjunction with uh, the uh, Farmer's Market that morning. So, but I know after that wraps up, we got stuff going on through the evening hours as well, right, Ken? We do. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier about the farmer's market I want to make sure people know yeah. is that we do accept EBT down here. Oh, okay. So anybody, you know, hasn't been down and used it before, uh, you just come in the office, we swipe your EBT card, we give you a uh, wooden token with $5 denominations to oh, okay. spend at the vendors. They'll have a, a sign designating that they accept it as well. Right. And you just spend it, they get you as close to $5 as they can with that token. And, uh, you know, it's just another avenue for them to have more sales and another avenue for people to come spend down here. Very good. All right. So as we wrap up the evening that night, I know we got a new concert series, right? We do. Yes. It's called a tribute concert series. And the first band that night is going to be at 630. It's going to be Slippery When Wet, which is a Bon Jovi cover band. Yeah, okay. And they're going to have a special guest, the Dirt Road Scholars. Uh, gates open at 7, uh, 6.30, I'm sorry, and the uh, tickets are $7. All right. Now, can I buy those tickets in advance on uh, Harvest Jubilee's website or at Parks and Recreation? I believe you can also at the Welcome Center. Oh, at the Welcome Center. Very good. Yeah, and these tribute bands are great. This is something new Harvest Jubilee is doing this year. They're going to do an entire series mm -hmm. of tribute bands and uh, you really wouldn't even know that it wasn't the real thing when you listen to these guys. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this particular guy, I mean, he even looks like Bon Jovi. Yeah. From what I understand, he has the same tattoos as Bon Jovi. Wow, I mean, it's it's a, kind of a dead ringer. And you can't beat the price, $7. Go ahead and get your tickets in advance for that. That'll be at the Carrington Pavilion. But, again, you can spend the entire day down here at the Crossing at the Dan Complex with things getting kicked off, as uh, Ken Larkin mentioned, on uh, Friday night, May the 1st, with the rebranding celebration. Then Kenny's got everything going on here at the Farmer's Market that morning along with the Make Danville Shine Home Expo. And you can wrap up the evening on the 2nd uh, with a beautiful concert with uh, the Slippery When Wet Bon Jovi Tribute Band. Well, Kenny... Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Is there any other things you'd like to mention before we get you off the air that will be taken here at the market uh, over the next couple of weeks? i got a couple other dates. Uh, okay. June 5th is going to be the first Fridays in the Crossing. Okay. And the band that night is going to be the Holiday Band. Right. And then June 20th, 
is the next uh, covers at the Crossing Series, okay. the tribute bands. Yeah. And it's going to be an All My Rowdy Friends tribute with a special guest, Matt Boswell, and the Holiday Blues Band. All right, so that'll be a Hank Williams Jr. tribute. Yes, sir. All right, very good. So a lot of things going on in the summer. I know we'll have Kenny back on talking more about these great events. But again, we want to see you out here on that weekend on Friday, starting Friday, May the uh, May the 1st, and then May the 2nd, the opening of the Farmer's Market and the concert and the Home Expo. So, Kenny, thank you for joining us today. And, again, uh, we'd love to see you out here at the Crossing at the Dan that weekend. So